And I think that people made way too much out of the fact that they took a kicker. Like yeah. people freaked out about that. It is not <laughs> that big a deal. It's just not. Well, I mean, okay, I mean, I get it. I mean, you know, there, there, you know, we, what's our most recent example of a highly drafted kicker is Roberto Aguayo. He went in the second round. He was bounced out of the league in one year. Everybody looks at that and goes, what the hell? Why are you going kicker in the third round? You know, or how good was Roberto Aguayo in round two? So I get the whole notion of, you know what, forget your analysis, forget your points, forget your reasoning. A kicker in the third round is too damn early. You know, I mean, I get the – and it's an easy thing to sell if you're going to stand in front of a camera and get emotional about it and be like, a kicker, a kicker, oh! <laughs> you know. Uh, it's You know, and then people are like, look at that guy, click on that, look at that. But I understood their reasoning. I actually believe their reasoning. They, I, I, I agree with their reasoning. If you go back and look at history, the kickers go in the fourth round. They wanted a kicker. They decided they wanted the best kicker. Uh, they thought he was going to go in the fourth round. They didn't have a fourth round pick. They used their uh, compensatory at the end of the third on the kicker, and that's their story, and they're sticking with it. And I think that's a reasonable take. I guess I've, been, I've gone through enough drafts now to just go, you know what? You're going to have some guy that you're going to draft early that you're going to be like, what? Why? But then you're also going to have some guy that you sign after the draft that you're like, wow, how come that guy didn't get drafted? Uh, to me, this is that draft because I went to the Mel Kuyper mock about whatever it was 10 days ago, and he had Joey Fisher from Shepard going to the Niners at the end of the third round. And I started watching film on the guy because I don't watch Shepard. Um, and it was like, whoa, look at this guy. This guy's throwing rag. This guy's ragdolling people, and he's a great story, and he looks good. Uh, and I read his whole bio. He's 25. He was a locksmith, blah, blah, blah. But um, but then I'm thinking, this guy's, you know, Kuyper's saying, Kuyper saying he's going on the third round. They got him today as an undrafted free agent. Moody, I would have thought, hey, can you get a kicker? Yeah, maybe get one as an undrafted free agent. Instead, you used a third-round pick. So, I don't know. To me, maybe I'm too easy going on this, on, the, on this part of it. But I look at it as a wash. It's like, yeah, I, I didn't. But I was like the rest of the crew going kicker third round. Really, we're inventing needs when when you have a you left no right tackle and you you just lost seven hundred snaps in your freaking D line and two of your best DBs just walked away in free agency and you got needs on other spots. You got guys getting old and all you're gonna sit there and go kicker like you've got it made when you got the Eagles stocking up. Uh, I don't know. It, it rubbed me wrong. But now, after watching Fisher in, in the as an undrafted guy, to me, I, I, I can I guess I can come to grips with it. The line that I keep going back to is is kickers are like lawyers, right? Everybody hates them <laughs> I saw until that. you need one, and then and you, you want need the a great one. Whenever. Yeah, yeah, like you give me the person that's going to deliver constantly. And yes, they could have taken another player instead of a kicker. That player could have been Jalen Hurd, right? We do this thing with draft picks where before we attach a name to them, they're so valuable. We hold them up. It so could high. be a Hall of Famer. Right. But it also could be Solomon Thomas or AJ Jenkins or JJ Stokes if you're old enough. Right. It, once you attach a name to it, it's totally different. And Moody could be terrible. We don't know. But I, I can't get that worked up about it. They do need a kicker, especially one that can handle kickoffs. Robbie Gold was terrible at kickoffs. And I'm not going to get that bent out of shape about it, especially if this guy is, as he's purported to be, a very clutch, very even keeled, kind of a stone cold guy. Because you know Kyle Shanahan loves to cart out the kicker on fourth down. Well, and we're all, sp I mean, I'll admit it. I'm spoiled. We're spoiled by Robbie Gold. Niners line up for a kick in the postseason. You're thinking it, it, it forget, hopefully it will make it. It's got to be made. I mean, like we're in that mode. It's got to be made. We've never, for the most part, we haven't seen one missed in the, in recent years. So that's our standard. We're just like, you just make all the kicks. Um, and in reality, we live in a world where Cody Parkey hit three crossbars or whatever. And, and guys, there's all kinds of Scott Norwood blew a Super Bowl. And, you know, I mean, that's the reality of the kicker position. The one thing I liked about this kicker from Michigan is he went four for four in the college football playoffs with the pressure on the line. Now, there is some debate, Rob, over whether the guy's got a leg or not. I mean, somebody people are saying, well, he doesn't have a great leg. I think the NFL.com report was like, yeah, he doesn't have a great leg. But then he's connected from 59, so man, that sounds like a pretty great leg to me. He's got a really good mark on kickoffs. 
all I got to say is I've met Brian Schneider. I think Brian Schneider's really good. Um, I think that was a terrific addition. Um, just from talking to Robbie Gold about Brian Schneider last year, he was like, man, we, we, we've got simple plans. They're smart plans. He's a really good special team coach. We've got total confidence in him. So you know what? If he, uh, Under Schneider, because I've got confidence in him that he's an established guy, if they want to make some investment on special teams long-term, in this case, this year with Jake Moody, I'll roll with it. I mean, I think somebody made the point, look, the guy becomes your awesome kicker in three years. Is anybody going to remember that you used a compensatory third on him? Or are you just going to be damn glad that you got a great kicker? So I get that I get that reasoning, so I, I, I guess I'm okay with it. But I'll say at the time, I was like, you got to be freaking kidding me. They're going kicker in the third round? I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. And I love Grant's video. Grant was like, kicker, kicker. You know? But... Patriots took a kicker, I think, 14 picks later. Right. So the know, Maryland like, kid, Ryland. So are we gonna like? No one has said boo about the Patriots taking a kicker. Like, is well, the I just don't like kicker? the philosophy. Period. Because I mean, the Niners took Wisniewski in the fourth, and I think the Patriots took the Stanford punter. Um, he was awesome. By the I forget his name, but he went like in the fifth or sixth. I think I think he went in the sixth. I think the Niners took Wisniewski in the fourth. And they took their awesome punter in the sixth. They've already moved on. They've yeah. already cut him. And is and then Wishnowski. How would you if you said Wishnowski? Um, do you feel good about him? Great about him? I mean, I, I don't. I don't think his numbers. I mean, I know he's a nice guy. I talked to him a few times last year, but as far as where he ranks, I don't think he ranks all that high. Yeah, he's he's fine. There's nothing special <laughs> about him. Like I know he has all these like knuckle punts and banana kicks and all that crap touch uh, he's a punter he's a punter yeah. it's he's interchangeable 